Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another AutoCAD web app video. Um, first thing I wanted to talk about is that the software, the, the web-based version is a little slow. Sometimes it doesn't load right away, and you could see that in my last video. Um, and also other times your cursor gets a little hung up, like it's not, not nearly as smooth as the experience on the full software. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing because it is a little frustrating if you're a power user and, uh, and you're used to kind of sailing through drawings, alright? But at the same time, it is, you know, web-based, and um, it is very useful because you can use it, you know, away from home if you don't have your full version of software. You, you know, mock something up real quick. Uh, but it is a little slow sometimes, all right? So next thing is, when you're drawing with lines, there's two different ways to draw, and we talked about this in the last video a little bit. If I were to click here, and I want to draw a 10-inch line at, you know, zero degrees, I can use the dynamic input, which is what those boxes are that's near my cursor. And in the regular version of the software, this is F12 on the keyboard, so you can toggle this on and off, okay? Um, I would hit tab right now, and that would get me to the degrees, and obviously like 90 would be straight up, zero would be off to the right, 180 would go to the left, 270 would go down, and then back to zero would go right, okay? So those are your, um, those are your angles, uh, and, and maybe it's important to draw that so you can kind of see it. Let's just say I drew a little circle here. And let's do, we'll talk about the text box. Basically, you just gotta grab the text. They don't have uh, single line text in this in this web-based version, but they do have the box text, M text. So you just click and then draw another corner. You can change the text height right here for however many inches you want. Um, you can type your text, and then you just hit the little check box, okay? So now, what I'm going to do is, oh, that's interesting. You can still do Control C for copy, so that's nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these around the circle and just change the numbers here, just to show you where all the angles are. So now, when you're drawing, now let's change these numbers first. Double click, that brings you back in. 90, checkbox. Double click. 180 is off to the left. And what this means is that all the other numbers that are not drawn on here, whoops, 270, um, are between those. So if I wanted to do a 30, 30 degree line, it's going to go up and to the right. Or 45 degrees or 60 degrees is going to be up to the right. Uh, 135 degrees up to the left. 225 is down to the left. And, you know, 300 is down to the right. Okay, so all of those different numbers are still in there. Um, you can, so like I was saying, you can still do control C and control V, which is nice because you can copy and paste things very quickly. All you gotta do is select it, control C, and then hit control V and then paste it and move it around, okay? Uh, but this is important to know because when you're drawing your lines, and let's just say I'm right here, that's the center of the circle. And from there, you would type your, you know, your distance and then hit tab and then type however many degrees you wanna draw it at, okay? Now there is another way to do this. The other way is using just coordinates. So we touched on this very lightly as well, but we'll go a little bit further with it. The starting point, I'm gonna make zero comma zero. So now that was interesting because I just hit enter there and the software kind of hiccuped and it didn't register the enter. So I think that's because we're internet, you know, web-based here, okay? Um, now, if I put my cursor back down here, I can keep typing numbers. Like let's say I wanted to go 10 comma zero okay that's going to go to 10 zero and i click back down there again you have to click down there each time which is kind of annoying but that's just the way that it is um 10 comma comma 8.25 so i'm actually going to make our title block right now so if, if you guys want to follow along you know i'll make that right in front of you guys and it, i'm making a box anyway so i might as well do it um the next number would be zero comma 8.25 and now see, I didn't, I forgot to click down there, so this started going in the box. So we don't want that, we wanna click down here, zero comma 8.25, enter. And then you could just go back here. See, it's a little slow, it's kinda of hiccupy. And then click, and then hit escape. Okay, now those snap points, it's important to mention that O snap is over here. You can turn that system off. You can bring these up and check midpoint or whatever you wanna have on. 
um, and that's going to be useful for all your snap points. Okay, so I'm going to zoom into this now. I'm just scrolling up on the mouse. Uh, I'm going to hold down on the mouse scroller. That's going to give me the pan hand, and I can move the screen still. Okay, and now I'm going to use the offset tool. Now, this is interesting because the software version wants you to type the distance first, then hit enter, then click the line that you want to offset, and then click on the side of the line, you know, up or down, left or right, which way you want to offset it. In this one, it wants you to select the line first, then type your distance. And again, you could go down here to do that, or you can do it in the box here. Let's say I want it to go one eighth of an inch. I can type um, uh, fractions, okay? And I want to actually go up, so I'm going to put my cursor in the up direction. 1 over 8, enter. Okay. Now you could also use copy for that if you'd like. Um, I like to use offset. So let's see if now if I click this new one. Yeah, so it doesn't remember the number that you did, so that's a little annoying as well. But, you know, you work through it. It's not supposed to be a, a full version that you're going to work on advanced plans. Alright, so we're going to do that. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We need six lines total. Just make sure your cursor is above it and that way it measures up. All right, something like that. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is, now we didn't talk about trim either, but we're gonna do offset again. We're gonna click this right line and we're gonna do to the left, one inch. And then we'll click the new one. And we'll go to the left one inch. And the new one again. One inch. And then the new one again. 3.5. Alright, so we have some lines we got to trim now because we're going to put all our information down here. A title block is, is a, a block that goes around your drawings, meaning your drawing is going to go in this area here. And it just says, like, you know, the school that you go to, uh, your name, the date. Um, you know what the scale is of the drawing what what class you're in if you're in one of my classes period two or whatever and then the name of the drawing you know you can put block and then you can put like a uh, title block or you can put like you know soccer field or whatever it is that we're making that day all right so now we're gonna do trim and you can type it or you can click it it's up to you if you wanted to click it it's over here somewhere okay um, now let's see how trim works. So I think you have to go to cutting edges, but let's let's try the trim first. Okay, so it's like a quick trim. So without having to type, or without having to hit that extra enter like we do in the software, you're actually just going to click what you want to trim off. So that makes it pretty easy. The only problem is like if I wanted to get rid of like three of these spaces, I'd have to click three times. Um, but you could also probably do cutting edges and say from here to here, or maybe, no, that's interesting. All right, let's forget that. I don't really like that way of trimming anyways. Ooh, of course it undid everything. Trim, and you can also go like this with the box or the line. All I did was I click down and I hold and then drag across and it's gonna trim all those lines, all right? All right, so next thing is gonna be text. So go to annotate, go to text, click anywhere, draw a box. Now this might actually be useful, you know, you can do it out here and bring it in, or you can do it right where it needs to go, that's up to you. This one is going to go right here in this space, and it's going to be 0.125, which is 1 eighth. And you're going to type your school, for us it's Tom's River High School North. And then we're going to hit the checkbox, okay, you can see that it fits right in that spot. If you need to, you can use the move command and then click anywhere as your base point and just move over a little bit, just try to get centered, okay? Um, let's do that again, text. This one is gonna go in the second space, like that. This one's gonna be your name. Please don't type your name. You know how many of my students do that sometimes? Uh, they'll hand in something and it'll say your name. You know, make sure that you're putting what your name is. That way I know whose it is. And then you hit the checkbox, and again, we can use move. You could probably even grab this blue mark here and slide it over on the green line. That green line is called polar. Oops. And you can toggle polar on and off. There we go, get that in the center. Um, that's right down here. 
and also you can change the increments by checking for which one of these you want it to track at. So right now it's just tracking to the right, up, left, and down. But if we did 45, it would do all the 45s and so on. So it depends what you check, okay? Um, next thing is we're gonna figure out how to change line weights, okay? So let's see if we can actually click something and line properties, line type scale. It's a continuous line. So that's good that they give you a couple different lines in there, line types. Um, line weight, there we go. So the border lines, so we talked about this in the last video. When you're clicking on a line, if you wanna select multiple lines, you're gonna do uh, the shift key, hold that down and click all the lines that you want. Ooh, really slow. Oh man, it's, uh, it's dragging very slow across the screen right now. So give it a second to catch up. And also uh, important to say that our school internet is a little slacking sometimes. So it could be that as well. But you can hold shift and click multiple lines. Let's see if I can do this with the slow internet. Come on, there we go. Now you don't have to click them individually. You can also draw a box, um, I'm sorry, or draw a line. Ooh. I'm not even doing anything right now and it's sliding on me. Let's give it a second to catch up. All right, we're just going to keep individually selecting because I don't want to. I want to stress it too much. She's very sensitive, and when I say she, I mean the software, the web-based version. Oh wow! Yeah, we're really dragging right now. Nope. Okay, um, I accidentally selected something that I didn't need to select, so you keep holding shift and click it again and it will deselect, all right? And then obviously we got one more line off to the right here. All right, um, and then we're gonna change our line weight to be, where is line weight again? You're gonna make it 1.00, okay? Now it's not showing the line weight, so let's see why that's not showing. Length, angle, transparency. 1.00. Let's see if L weight is still a command. Keep your sleep for an interruption. At 8.53 this morning, we'll be doing a moment of silence for all of those that are off in the September 11th attack. I'm on right now. Please talk to your students. Okay, sorry, we have an announcement in the building right now. Okay, so um, I gotta wrap this up because we got something coming on right now. But, um, so yeah, I'm not really sure why the line weight is not showing right now. Um, I'm gonna have to look into that later and I'll talk in the next video. But uh, for my students, you're gonna, in this area right here, centered, you're gonna put the date. In this area right here, you're gonna put scale, colon, and make sure that you're doing all caps because caps uh, is just, it's just an architectural thing that makes it look a lot cleaner and it's easier to read. Um, and then here you're gonna put full, okay? So scale full. This is gonna say um, period colon, and it's gonna be whatever period you're in. So you can just put two or five or whatever it is. Um, and then you're gonna do block colon, and you're gonna do the name of the drawing. This one's gonna be title block, okay? So you're just gonna do all that text, and then you're gonna hit save. And then that's pretty much it. That's it for the title block. All right, so now it's a little bit harder. It's a little bit longer to make, um, but you know, it is a web-based version. So it's, it's, I think it's pretty good. It's, it's good the way it is. Um, they can make a couple changes, but. All right, so I appreciate you guys watching. Um, this was the second one of the AutoCAD web-based videos, and we're gonna have a couple more coming up. All right, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna do my entire, not my entire playlist, but a bunch of different um, playlist videos that I've already done. Um, over again in the web app because my students are using that right now because of COVID-19. All right. So again, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Gotta catch